what can you tell us about season two? <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Right in there. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Deeper, darker, scarier, funnier, Weirder, sexier, stranger, stranger, uh, bigger. Yeah, I mean, uh, when we leave season one, the proverbial shit hits the fan, and apologies if you can't write that, you can put a little asterisk. Um, <laughs> but season one, I feel like, is just this uh, pressure cooker of just all of these things that are going to happen, and as an audience member, you know, you don't know whether we're going to be loyal to all the facts of that historical event, and is it going to be as boring as what I studied in high school? And then, <laughs> Absolutely um, not. It no. takes a journey into the fantastical that still tries to... Um, honor what happened during that time period, but, you know, take some liberties to uh, get to the heart of people's perception of that time period. This is a very um, supernatural, superstitious time for people in a new world where literally anything was possible, and in the anything is possible is, you know, the devil and demons and God and angels and savage Indians and dark arts and all kinds of things. Like, in their mind, these genre ideas who are real um, and so season one I think for us as a cast and crew um, for the story that happens in the show I feel like it all was just kind of boiling up and now the lid kind of gets blown off at the end of season one uh, and everyone is displaced in some way um, Cotton is traveling to Boston after killing his father. Shane was almost, uh, John Alden has been almost killed in the woods and rescued by Indians. Um, Isaac has gotten some kind of plague and might die. Uh, Elise, <laughs> Elise becomes the queen of the night. I mean, there's so many different revolutions happening. Uh, and this is a time that precedes the American Revolution, and so um, everyone has these mini revolutions of their own in the town of Salem. And so I think what you can expect from season two, I guess a word to sum it up would be revolution. That, um, that there's been an explosion of chaos, and that chaos is necessary in order to create great change. Um, and I don't know what the details will be, but I imagine it'll be something like that. <laughs> yeah, look, one of the one of the, the, the phrases that led season one, you know, was "Which Among Us," right? playing on that phrase. And one of the phrases we bounce around for season two is "Which War?" Or "Which War?" This is a time where there are wars all culminating here: war between the Europeans and the Indians, war between the French and the English, war between the Dutch and the Germans that are still there, the war that's going to be brewing over the slaves that are being brought in. And we've established Anne as a witch now. That's we right. We have, yeah. a, uh, we have Anne, we have exactly. Mercy, we have So in fact, there's a whole the dynastic... Yeah. Man versus nature. <laughs> <laughs> so in fact... Man versus cell phone. Exactly. <laughs> so the there's, a, there's a whole dynastic... Yes, kind of are important. going to be, because we're now going to have a dynastic battle. There's going to be a question as to which is the line, even within, say, the English witches, which we call the Essex witches, because in general, they're the traditional English witchcraft who all came, as the Puritans did mostly from Essex, not exclusively, uh, but, but mostly. Um, so even within that strand of the witches, we now have a potential battle because we know the Hales are an old, old, old family with clearly very powerful witch blood, and now Anne Hale is discovered in the most horrific way possible what her power really is, not to mention has kind of had a bit of an alliance in a funny way with Cotton that she might in, in, in ways end up fulfilling her father's dream that in fact the Hales and the Mathers might merge and create the top family of witches and the top family of Puritans might, might come together. But meanwhile, there's Mary Sibley, the Black Rose, that they grafted onto their line, who is not only by no means relinquishing power, but now has an heir, which she never had before. And meanwhile, of course, we have Mercy Lewis, who is saying something true when she says, well, the rule is the one who kills the Samhain is the Queen of the Night, and yet she is the one who did it. So there's a free-for-all coming over who's in charge, and that's not even to mention the German witches who want in on this now, too. So, so identity, which they identity being another... Identity, you know, identity politics has been the ruling politics of America since day one. And that's a lot of what we're playing with it. And whether that's between Indians and Europeans, between the five, six different types of Europeans, between that the witches themselves are as driven by ethnic and identity issues as the others are. And not only that, they all bring their gods and their demons with them. One other thing I put up there that's going to be a lot of fun to play with is we've only barely scratched the surface of the idea that Salem is a port. It's on the edge of the sea. It's a super important port. But also, from an almost Lovecraftian horror perspective, there are things in the sea as horrendous 
as there are in the forest. So imagine Salem as Innsmouth, in effect, if you know your Lovecraft. Imagine, imagine if, you know, if Lovecraft was really the more accurate historian of our early history than Arthur Miller was. You know? It's, it's H.P. Lovecraft's crucible, not Arthur Miller's. So. <laughs> That's exciting. Well, your character seemed to be dying in the uh, finale, <laughs> and yet you're here, so that's a good sign. Um, what can you tell us about season two for you? Well, uh, I, I, I really, I really don't know, um, and I'm here as part of my, my deal for season one, actually, so I have no idea what's happening, and I will know in a few months. Um, I really, I really don't know. We would all be in big trouble if we don't have Isaac, we believe really firmly, no community can survive without its fool, without its holy sacred fool. Now whether he stays a fool, <laughs> and what he becomes, who knows. But the season did end with an effect him throwing himself on the grenade, which is not enough to stop it from happening, but may well have changed the impact that it would have had had he done what Mary wanted to do. To do yes, at a potentially great cost, but not total, or maybe. We'll see. We don't want to give anything away, but I'll just say, I, 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 by no means have we seen the last of us the Fornicator. Would I love to be here next year, speaking to you again? Yes, I would. I've had, I've had a great time with the show, and I think there's, you know, like all the other characters, the story, the historical story, I think we've really, like you were saying yesterday, scratched the surface. And there's so much more to tell. Just in the history, you got to remember, you know, yes, it was a six months of a show. In, in, in fictional time, it was one month. We haven't even gotten to the events that the Crucible begins with. Okay. Now, we're not going to spend years and years and years on the witch trials, because ultimately the witch trials are a door to open into a completely supernatural vision of early America and of the world, based on the consensus reality that the people had back then. But even within the events of the witch trials themselves, we've barely begun. There's been no panel of judges yet. There's not been the, 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 the new Governor Phipps has not arrived. There's so much drama, politics, and magic were all still to happen there that we've just this has just been the setup for it, really. Mercy is such a great character. Mm. Can, can you talk about playing her? I, yeah, um, it, it's, 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 a, it's a wild flipping ride. I love it. I, you know, as an actor, the ability to play so many different emotions and you get to, I mean, it's like you're, she's a bipolar schizophrenic girl. So it's like just to have something like that and get to just work on it and, um, play with it. I mean, it's a dream come true. So, I've always been so interested in crazy people, <laughs> so I've, uh, it's, it's, it's so much fun. I just eat it up. I just, I love it. It's well, your arc was just fascinating so from being used by them. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was so amazing. Thank you.